Hey everyone, welcome to a new video. Welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today we are going to be talking about how I like to style vintage pieces so they don't look that vintage, but that they are fitting within my more modern wardrobe, you could say. So let's get started. Welcome if you're new here, welcome if you're a returning visitor, thank you so very much for joining me today. Today we are going to be chatting about fashion, which is something I do sometimes, but mostly this channel is about eyeshadow palettes, trying new Essence and Catrice products, and getting the use out of my makeup. But fashion is the OG love for me when it comes to these kind of things, and I just really enjoy making this kind of content. I know not a lot of you will be watching this, uh, because I do have a little bit of a wacky style like if you're a minimalist and you're into like capsule wardrobing this is not your channel but if you're someone who likes to have fun likes to try new things when it comes to their clothing then maybe i may have a couple of ideas in this video as well so what i've done is that i've taken eight outfits eight vintage pieces from my wardrobe that i then have styled up for you in the way that i would like to personally wear it so let me talk you through these outfits I will be showing you uh, little cards to show you where everything is from, as well as a full outfit uh, as I'm talking about the pieces as I'm holding them up. So let's get to outfit number one. Now the first outfit I want to show you features this flannel bl blouse. I picked this up last summer from a vintage kilo sale that I went to, and it doesn't get any more 90s than this. I'm not sure if the colors show up true to color on camera. I can never truly tell, uh, but it's like pink and mint green and yellow and white flannel. It's a bit thicker, so I like styling this up more like a shacket than an actual blouse because it is a little bit thick to be wearing by itself. Then it's more of a winter piece. I love rolling up the sleeves and unbuttoning the cuffs uh, just to give it that more like casual look. And then just with a white t-shirt like I'm wearing today, a pair of jeans, a pair of sneakers, or like I did here with Dr. Martens. That was like, I wore this out the other day and I was like, it was so much fun. And then as I was going out, I threw on that green coat that I have with the green beret. And I felt the pink and the green made for, for a cute clash. So that's why I went with the green coat. You don't have to wear beige, people, you really don't. So yeah, a nice bright pop of color in this vintage piece. It's super comfortable and because it has been worn before, it's just that super soft, really easy to wear fabric and that's what I love about this one um, so yeah this is definitely something that I think that you can wear in different ways I could you know tie it in a front knot I could button it up all the way and tuck it into into the front of my jeans there's different ways I could wear this shirt for sure but this is my favorite way of wearing it now the second outfit I would like to show you is all about a vintage piece that is not only a vintage piece but it's also one of the most long-standing items in my wardrobe. I think I have owned this blazer since like 2009 or 2010. Like I've owned this for more than a decade. And it's one of the favorite, my most favorite pieces in my wardrobe, but I don't think I've ever actually worn it on the channel. I don't get to wear it a whole lot because it is really, really thick. What am I talking about? I'm talking about this bright red wool cashmere blend blazer that I picked up for 10 pounds in a sale when I was in London. Like, <laughs> it's really one of those dream items where you're like, okay, perfect fit. It is very vintage because it does have three buttons and it's a little bit more, it used to fit a little bit more oversized on me than it does now. Right now it's a bit more fitted, I feel. And I love wearing this with gray t-shirts underneath and then mom jeans. Um, but I've styled it up in the video with a pink and red t-shirt. It's not as pink as I'd like it to be. Plus the t-shirt didn't have the, sort of texture it needed to really clash well with the wool of the blazer. The t-shirts the was too soft of a jersey, which is actually why it's in my pajama drawer, because <laughs> I wear it more around the house now than I do, but I did wear it out and about underneath this blazer in the past. So I thought I could go a, a, a bit of a throwback here. And then just to uh, make sure we have that pop of red always also somewhere else in the outfit, I decided to put on my Nike blazers, which have the red accents on the shoes. And that way we nicely have the, um, <laughs> the outfit coming full circle, at least in my, 
in my opinion. And this wool blazer is just one of my favorite pieces. This is something I'm never going to part ways with, even though I only get to wear it like once or twice a year. Because of how thick this is, this makes me overheat and I can really only wear it in the dead of winter. But if you've been with me, then you know that I love vintage blouses. That's like really where I just, like that's what I come home with most whenever I've been to a vintage sale. And I love shopping men's blouses especially Hawaiian print ones. And this is just a really great casual piece just to throw on with jeans and a pair of sneakers. I don't want to faff around too much with this. This is such a great summer staple. And because it's a men's size, it's always going to be oversized. So what I prefer to do with blouses like this is to tie them in a front knot. That is my favorite way because even if I tuck them in, because they are cut for a men's body rather than a women's one, I feel it doesn't look that flattering if I tuck it in. I can do it, I can get away with it, but I feel that the front knot just adds a playful touch. And then I just went with, I think it's Vans that I'm wearing with these, because this blouse does have quite a lot of black. Uh, and you can't really tell on the front, but it does have this really cute, like, floral design there as well. So it's just the perfect sort of Hawaiian print blouse. Again, found this at a vintage kilo sale for like pennies, really. Blazers is also where it's at for me when I shop vintage. And this blazer is one that I bought last fall. And I remember that I had just purchased this and I wanted to wear it. And I actually paired it with my pink Cezanne silk blouse. And I thought the silk of the blouse with this wool blazer made for such a great comb combination. The pink adds a nice bright pop of color. I don't like all black outfits all that much, so because this is already black and white and a print, I thought to go with a color against it to make sure that they both sort of pair very well. I love this blazer because it has that like velvet color to it, and then it's just a plain black and white. It's not quite like a pied de poule, it's like a houndstooth design, it's almost like a star, I'm not sure if you can see that. So again, it's a bit more of an interesting print, with just a pair of jeans, I went with straight leg here and then I wore it with my square toe and other story boots because those are just, I thought they were going to go really well with it but I have found that those boots with the way the nose is cut I can only really wear them with straight leg. If I were try to wear them with mom, mom jeans, I feel they don't work as well. So yeah, um, straight leg jeans, square toe boots and then you just have a really modern classic outfit that is sort of like casual but still a little bit more upscale, I feel. Now bodice, bottoms I find very hard to buy vintage, but I have a few and mainly these kind of pleated skirts. This blue and yellow one has been in my wardrobe for some time and I remember finding this at a vintage shop and then that shop was organizing a vintage kilo sale with all of their dead stock that they just wanted to get rid of before the new season and before they were buying anything new. And then I went to that kilo sale and that skirt that I had seen for, I think this was a price around 20 euros originally, and I got it in a vintage kilo sale where I got, I think a kilo of clothing for 20 euros. So I in the, ended up paying like four or five euros for this which I thought was a good price point. And because it has the yellow, I like pairing lots of different things actually with this. This is a skirt I love wearing in the summertime. So I've paired it here with a pair of yellow sandals that I have, and then also a very soft yellow blouse that from Monkey with the sailor collar. I actually have another yellow blouse for Monkey that I think could go with this as well, but it's very roughly. And because the skirt already has quite a lot of movement, I thought that the other blouse with the sailor collar was just a little bit better. Plus that's nice and textured and a bit more see-through. So I felt that that gave it a little bit more of a fun edge uh, rather than something that's very grandma-esque. Because if you just wear this with a regular pointy collar blouse, I find that it can look a little grandma chic. I'm not against grandma chic, I like that. Um, but I don't want to make it look too dated for this video. Now, whenever you go to these kilo sales, you sometimes find very wacky things. You just do. And one of the wackiest purchases I've done is this blouse. Uh, I now see that I had to do up the last button here. Uh, and this, I'm not sure what this, where this came from, what this is. It has a really weird bottom. Um, so I'm pretty sure it's part of some sort of costume or... 
I don't know, a suit, something like that, but I call this my Phantom of the Opera blouse. It has these really huge oversized billowy sleeves, and I'm not sure if the camera picks up on it, but it has this jacquard print, which is really lovely, and then you can't really see it here, but you'll see it in the on um, shots for sure. It has a pussy bow tie, which I love. I love a good pussy bow tie. It's so classic. But because this is really billowy and oversized, I thought, how can I play with this? Because I like this blouse by itself, but that's why I decided what would happen, like just to see, just to have a bit of a play, what would have happen if I paired this with a Spencer. So this is perhaps color-wise the most boring outfit today because it's just black and white, really. Um, but then I did go with some fun accents in the shoes and in the belt, which have this like Western-inspired sort of detail. And I think I like the outfit with just the blouse but also with that little knit sweater, sleeveless sweater on top. I thought that was a good look too. Now, I think a holy grail when it comes to vintage shopping is to find yourself a pair of Levi's 501. Mine aren't true vintage, like these aren't from like, I don't know, back when Levi's quality was all that. Um, there's different tags that you need to look for. Um, I don't really tend to invest in vintage pieces, if you, if you know what I mean. Like, I don't try to get actual pieces from like the 1920s or like the 1960s, those can be very hard to find and can be really expensive, especially if you want them to be in a decent enough condition. I think these were like from the last 15 or maybe 20 years. They are men's 501s though. And I did have to stitch them back together and I just love how casual these look. I used to own a pair of women's 501s, but I feel the fit is definitely different than this one is. It is a little bit oversized, so it is a bit of a weird one, so I have to belt it, but then with a pair of white sneakers and just a casual top, I love wearing this in the summertime because it is that really nice, like easy to wear denim that doesn't make you overheat, whereas some denim, especially if it's mom jeans, I feel it can get a little bit constricted. And with this, it's nice and flowy. Now this next outfit is perhaps more of a fall <laughs> outfit, but I think you are catching my vibe here. I really like the tonal way this outfit comes together and I actually bought all of these pieces separately over time and then I just kind of had this little light bulb moment where I was like, but that would be a good look. And what it all is all about is this vintage blazer that I picked up, I think summer of 2022, no, summer of 2020 I should say. And this is a really nice, lovely brown paisley print, like almost tapestry kind of fabric um, in this blazer here. It's a little oversized, like look at that. It seems to have a bit of green as well, some like lighter mustardy browns. And that's why I like pairing this with a pair of tobacco colored corduroy pants that are a bit more wide leg on me. And then I like pairing it with a pair of Western boots, also in a brown color. And then just for a little bit of contrast, a mustard yellow t-shirt, because I feel that those colors all go together really well. And there's something about my hair that it's sort of mimics almost. So I feel that this outfit nicely comes together and that is just, it's one of the best finds and I now can never ever get rid of these pieces because this outfit, it's just perfect. The final blouse that I styled up for you, and this is definitely one where I feel like uh, it shows that if you wear it with more modern pieces, then vintage items can definitely get a more updated look because this bright blue blouse is very 80s. It's got these really poofy sort of sleeves and I, I was afraid that if I were to wear this with the wrong thing, that it would look quite matronly. It aged me It aged me a lot when I actually tried it on at the vintage kilo sale. I think I was wearing a skirt that day and with like a longer midi skirt, especially because it has such a high neck, it can make you look very sort of, well, but more like you're in your 70s or your 80s rather than <laughs> a little bit younger than that. I'm much younger than that. So that's why, again, it has this really beautiful jacquard print, this bib detail and these stunning buttons. Not sure if you can see, um, but yeah, this is very, very 80s. And so that's why I went with a faux leather skirt, faux leather skirt <laughs> and a pair of really nice bright blue boots that I think accentuate the blue. Of course, I could have gone for black to keep the bottom of the outfit a little bit more sort of like toned down but I just thought for the video we could have a bit of fun and we could spice it up with what I like to call my Ziggy Star, uh, Stardust boots. 
because they're very much my like David, my ode to David Bowie, you could say. <laughs> so that's why I thought the boots, which are a velvet with silver stars, would nicely give this a bit more of a wacky moment. I always think that if you have a wacky item like this, you can try toning it down, but sometimes it's just good to really embrace the outspokenness of the piece and just add to it. And I feel it usually works a bit better. And then finally, another item that I always struggle to find really good ones whenever I look, go vintage shopping, because with my body type, it's just sometimes really difficult to find a good dress. But when you find them and they're in this stunning purple shade, of course you have to bring it home. It is a little bit too big for me in the torso, so I do have to hike up the skirt and use a belt to keep it together. So I do have to sort of manipulate it to make it look right on me. Because it is vintage, of course, it's going to be pretty long. And again, I wanted to have fun with this outfit. I love juxtaposing purples and greens. I think that's a really cool way to wear some colors. Again, I could have gone for a black boot with this for sure, but I felt that the green added a nice touch. So I went with these wacky slingbacks that have a bit of a bow detail, but I could have toned it down a little bit because I also have a pair of forest green suede boots that I think would be really lovely with this if it was more like a fall appropriate outfit. But if you want to jazz it up, those slingbacks are just a great way to do it. And as you can see, I'm not sure, but these little markings have some light blue and green and red in it as well, and a bit of a neutral. So there's actually a lot you can pair this with. The only thing that really, really irks me about this one is that it has this tie detail for where it came with a belt. And I, I'm aware I could snip them off, but I'm afraid it would cause a lot of fraying. So that's why I've kept them on, but I can hide them underneath the belt for sure. So that is the last item that I wanted to show you in the last outfit. So there you have it. Those are eight outfits I wanted to create for you with some of my favorite vintage pieces in my wardrobe. I hope that this video is helpful in giving you some ideas on how to dress up a vintage piece and make it look a little less dated. That's the aim of the video anyways. And that, you know, just have fun, play around with it and uh, see what you can come up with. Because sometimes, like with that brown paisley print blazer, you may not really know how to wear it at first, but then you start piecing something together and you come up with a great outfit. So thank you very much for joining me today. Please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week, so I hope you'd like to stay tuned for more because I'm currently also doing a makeup declutter, so I hope you would like to come back again soon. And we'll chat then. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.